welcome to Pyrrhus Podcast. I'm Mike. And this is Orlando. And we are going to have another special, not a what's sold video, but things that we really enjoyed selling. You want to give a little more context? Yeah. So, you know, there's the sales that, you know, when you're talking to people about uh, reselling and you can give them the big hustles, the big bolos where I paid 25 cents for this and sold it for X amount. And those are fun, right? Because they're good stories. It's good profit. Uh, or sometimes it's just like a grind. I sold a whole bunch of these for this amount. But sometimes your sales are actually a little bit more enjoyable because maybe it's something you really enjoyed picking up or something you had no idea. So you took a gamble. There were no comps. You listed it really high. There's validation. Yeah. So right? it validates like you looked at something you're like, there's no comps. Or I know I can get more money for this. I'm going to list this higher. And you actually sell it for what you wanted. And it it invalidates you. Yeah. And and, or there's sometimes just cool stories, right? Like how you pick something up or what happened in the whole sell. It's kind of it it makes it more exciting. So today we're talking about not just what sold, but what are some recent kind of fun sells we've had? Things we've really enjoyed that were like, that was cool. Sometimes you sell things like, oh, sweet. I just sold that, made 40 bucks. Other times you're like, oh man, this thing sold. Remember when- And you you sold it for like $10 and you're like all pumped about it. By the way, let us know, not your most profitable, but something that you felt complete validation as a reseller. Like you're like, hey, I'm moving up in the game. I know what I'm doing. Let us know in the comments, the comments below. And please hit that subscribe button if you haven't been subscribed and that like button if this video brought you value. And if you just enjoyed it for entertainment purposes while you're listening, hit that like button. Yeah. All right. So let, let me start us off. So this one I enjoyed. If you listen to the podcast, there is this ongoing saga with this graphics card. It was an NVIDIA graphics card, which if you don't know. That's like a bolo right now. If you can get your hands on any kind of NVIDIA card for a good cost, you're going to be able to sell it quick. Now, if you remember, I picked up a NVIDIA uh, graphics card. It wasn't the high end model that I thought was in the box. So there was a new box and inside of it, it was the model that was replaced with the newer one. But still, I sold the older one. I paid $5 for the graphics card in the box for about $200 within 24 hours plus shipping. But that's not what I wanted to share this time. It's that after that sold, I thought, you know, I wonder if this box, I wonder if somebody wants this box for a certain amount. And sure enough, I listed it. Now, somebody was able, well, not able, was willing to not only pay domestic shipping, but pay global shipping, which is about $50, right? And I listed this for about 25 and went on sale. So I sold it. You can take a look at the picture here, what it is. It's a NVIDIA graphics card box. Okay. Before Mike asked me, are you sure just selling the box? Cause you know, we've talked about scammers before. Yeah. yeah. Xbox box. No, no, it was just the box with the manuals and you can see and I already was in the profit and it was so satisfying to be able to sell the box because I already made profit. I made awesome profit. And to know that instead of throwing away that box, it was worth it to me to spend that extra three to five minutes to get it listed. And it was easy to ship, put in a flat rate box and away it went. And I felt validation after that sale. No, oh, that, That's super sweet, especially when you can turn what was like potentially a loss around to a win. This is just throw away. Um, Cool. So my first one comes from a board game that I picked up at a thrift store. And, you know, I love selling board games, but one of the problems with board games is they're often like really awkwardly shaped. They don't fit in most boxes well. You got to find special boxes or Frankenstein boxes because sometimes they're just way too long and they're, they're super like not thick, right? So you're like trying to find the right size boxes to fit for these. But I found one that's about the size of a textbook at a thrift store. And I'd never seen this game before. Uh, in fact, I was that when I first saw it, I thought it was a, a, like an old PC computer game. I think huh. it's kind of what it looked like. Uh, but it was a, it's called a Labyrinth War on Terror. And so it's like an old Gulf War 2001 um, military board game. But like the old school, super complex ones where you're going through like a whole campaign and like you punch out these little wooden like quarter inch by quarter inch uh, little square wooden things that you would just put all over the board and, and and it looked way too complex for anything that I would play because I love complex games, but this just wasn't my style. Like Axis and Allies, that is? Yeah, more intense than that. Like wow. imagine like okay. Axis and Allies on steroids. Wow. Uh, but these were unpunched and I paid like $4 for this game and there weren't many comps sold. Um, there were a couple that were like used and, and the, the comps were really low, but I listed this for $50 and it sold. And I'm nice. super stoked about it because it was a nice Cause sometimes when board games game sell, it's like, oh, I'm gonna make 15, 20 bucks on this, but like just the hassle packing and all of this, this one was so easy to ship. And it was one of those things where it's like, 
okay. Uh, sometimes I'm like, should I get out of board games? And then sales like this are like, no, this is, this is why I do it. Four bucks to 50 bucks. This is a good one. Uh, that, that is again, so satisfying, right? It's kind of, you ever seen those like YouTube channels or TikTok that's so satisfying, right? That's how I feel when like these things happen. So this next like one, an ASMR video, is that like what you're talking about? I don't about? know if that far. It's kind of like when people are like rolling stuff out or they're cutting something. You're yeah. Like, that's eh, kind of like ASMR. Is it? Okay. Yeah. Anyways. Okay. Maybe we should have PHP ASA, ASMR someday. Mm, all right make sure you hit that like button before you tune us out all right so next item there's a whole there's actually a tiktok if you go to our tiktok we're also on tiktok and instagram and make sure to follow us on all social media we are pure podcast there's this kindle that i came across now i went to a garage sale and in this garage sale they, they, i made a stack and in the stack there was a harley backpack there was a fax machine there was a blanket there was all the stuff and one of the items i picked up was an older version wireless Kindle. And I didn't know that Kindles, if you take a look at the picture here, that, that Kindles can actually work without any, like you don't need a major network to use that Wi-Fi. It has like unlimited Wi-Fi so you can download from anywhere. You don't have to be connected to a certain network. And so I picked this up. Average cost for everything was $2. I listed it high. And it sold within two weeks for $198 plus shipping, right? So yeah, okay, was the, the profit satisfying? Yes, but what was satisfying was there was a bunch of resellers already at this garage sale. They already had combed. This individual that sold it was a person that bought storage units, and they were just, this was like the leftovers they wanted to get rid of. And amongst the leftovers, I already sold the fax machine that was in there for about, I think it was like $90 plus shipping. And then this Kindle, I was able to sell from $2 to $198 plus shipping. That was satisfying. That's right. One man's trash is another man's treasure. There you go. That's, that's kind of that's kind of what we do, you know? <laughs> that's what we do here. All right. So my next one is uh, kind of cool because um, I've had some success with hats, but I do not know. I, I need to learn more about vintage labels, vintage brands. I've kind of just have have gone off of looks and if I could find comps, I don't know enough tags yet. You know, it's like an old snapback. Oh, maybe it's worth. So if it's like a, an obvious one, like, oh, this is like an old Wiener Schnitzel hat. Like this would probably sell uh, just because it's cool and old and vintage. But um, I would. Yeah, no, for sure it would. But I found a while back. And, and so I have a lot of hats that have sat and I'm like, did I, this is a good purchase. Well, I bought a hat that was a Boy Scouts of America um, Eagle Scout hat. Hmm. Right. And I'm like, I don't know. Like it, it was pretty much new. So I think it's vintage because it's like older looking, but it had never been worn. It still had a tag on it. But I'm like, this is, is this like, you know, sometimes there's hats and things you get where it's like very specific to like an area or, a, you know, a certain run. It's like they, they're mass produced and who knows if it's worth anything. So I, there weren't a lot of comps on this. I bought it for like 50 cents and I'm like, you know, I'm just going to do like the, you know, a good price for me is usually like the 49 bucks, you know, you know, $49. Yeah. That seems like a good price. And it sold for forty nine dollars. There you go. Again, when you set the price, right? And shipping, like, plus and shipping, shipping. forty nine plus it's shipping. It's just this is why I I don't know. Part of the reason I like listing high, I like to see what I can get away with. Yeah, especially when it was like I think this has been like a couple of years since I bought it. So it's one of those things you I forgot. Like when it sold, I was like, I asked my wife, I'm like, when did I get that? I don't, I'm not even sure I remember like where the location was or anything about it because it was just I probably just bought it at a, a thrift store or garage sale with a bunch of other stuff. And it sat for a long time. It's been listed forever and it sold. So it's like that validation of, all right, like even when I didn't know what I was doing, I kind of knew what I was doing. Nice. It's all right. So I kind of got that feeling about knowing what I was doing. So I went to a store that shall not be named a few days ago. This is a recent one. You can actually see it on Instagram. And, you know, prices were sky high. Every, I mean, a pair of Doc Martens for $100, a pair of Tony Lama boots for 150 like just, just craziness. And in the glass case, there was this timer and this timer is a digital clock. And it's kind of like if it was for, for boxers or for fighting. And, you know, I looked at the price and it was $50 and I had my teacher discount. So it was going to be 45. But this is what was satisfying about it is that when I looked at comps, so I always say, do not do auctions. Somebody had sold one of these for 115 at auction without a remote. Somebody had sold it full price, not full price, but fixed price with a remote for about $170. And those are the two sold comps. There was only one 
unsold listing and it was for $269.99. So I looked at this, I thought, okay, there's only one listing and it's for $269.99. I already know that somebody was able to sell it for profit at auction and they could have gotten more money if they wanted. I know somebody sold it for $170 with the remote. What are the odds that somebody would be willing to pay good money for mine because it's listed for about a hundred dollars cheaper than you know the new one with remote? And you know, if you're in a boxing ring or whatever, I'm sure maybe they're not even needing a remote. So I picked it up for forty five dollars. I listed it, and it sold within twenty four hours for one hundred sixty nine dollars and ninety nine cents plus global shipping. And I, I believe it's going all the way to Japan. And so I was like, this is... Man, you should have kept it. We should have started training. Like me and you, boxing, Pure Hustle Podcast, you go. Fight Club. You think people would pay to watch it? I think people would pay. I think it'd No be, Holds Barred. I Mike think, and Orlando with, with a couple of boxing gloves and we just go for it. I think it'd be fun until I remembered that I'm in my 40s. What does age have to do with it, man? I, I don't know. I know some pretty studly 40-year-olds. I do too, but myself included. But... <laughs> But pain hits different in your 40s than it does in your 30s and in your 20s. Uh, depends on, it just depends on how tough you are. Let us know in the comments below who would win that fight, me or Orlando, um, you know, since we're talking about timers and all that. So, All right. So anyways, that was satisfying. And on that note, hopefully you found that helpful. Let us know what your satisfying sales have been. Wait, I have one more. Oh, are we doing one more? Yeah, I've only done oh, two. Oh, sorry. My bad. Yeah, all right. I got another Calls one. Calls us off here. See, look, look. I got them. I got them all worked up with the uh, with the I, I with did. the boxing with there the uh, well, what do they call it? An exhibition match. All right. So um, this one was cool because I, I bought. I was at a garage sale early, early on in my reselling, and I walk up and this lady had like just a couple. You know the ones where it's like not really a garage sale, but they just bring out like one table out to the street, and you're like, eh, is it even really yeah, worth it? Yeah, it's kind of like they're watching TV and they're like, eh, let's yeah. go outside. So there's only like ten or fifteen things on this like table. And I'm looking and in one of the boxes, there's like eight action figures and they're all spawn unopened action right. figures, right? Different, different like characters, but like from the movie spawn or from the comic book spawn. And I'm like, oh, these are really cool. How much you want for these? She's like, I don't know. They're my boyfriends. And he's got all kinds of collectible stuff. And I hate this stuff. And she's like, how much will you give me for it all? Or how much would you give me? And this is before I like was doing really good with negotiations and stuff. So I gave the first number and I was like. I don't know. How about like 20 bucks? And she's like, oh, my boyfriend's going to kill me. But you know what? I, I can't look at this stuff in the house anymore. Nice. Take it. Well, I have sold almost all of those. Now, I think I only have one left. And some of them have sold for like 40, 50 bucks for like one figure. But I just recently sold one. It only sold for like $25. It was the clown from Spawn. Okay. Uh, but it's just cool. Like, because it was a fun story. It was one of the first times. And I've heard a lines similar to that of like, oh, you know, maybe I should ask my husband or my wife or, uh, yeah, I need to get rid of this because my wife wants it gone or something like that. Whenever you hear that, you know, you can you can strike pretty hard because uh, if one of the two party members does not want it anymore, uh, your chances of getting a good deal on it is much higher. So your time uh, is limited to you got to move fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before all of a sudden he walks out and says, you're not selling my spawn stuff. <laughs> so there we go. All right. Well, hey, that, on that note, hopefully these were bolos. Hopefully this was something that brought value to you. Again, let us know in the comments. Appreciate all your support. Make sure to hit that subscribe and that bell notification. Yeah. As always, make sure to be real. Be relevant. And be reselling. Late. Peace.